Who are you? I'm Kurt Baldwin. I'm the cellist in the Ariana String Quartet. Uh, we're based in St. Louis at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. And uh, this is my, our 11th summer coming up to Madeline Island. So what, uh, what is it that's uh, so special that would make you come back here 11 times? Well, the, the, the atmosphere um, that, that uh, has been created here at Madeline Island is, is unique nationally. Um, each summer's got a different dynamic. Kids, students come from all over the United States and outside the United States, high school students, collegiate students, um, and they're assembled into these, these string quartets for three and four weeks. Uh, they bring an energy to the working process here that's unique every summer. Um, the faculty brings an energy that's unique and varied every summer. And um, then you've got the atmosphere of the island, which, which has its own energy. Um, the shifting light and the temperature and the beauty um, create this environment for learning that's, that is unlike any other place that we know of. And we've been to a lot of places and there's a, there's a clarity here and um, a directness um, that's possible with, between the faculty and the students that really is created by this ambiance that's, that's so captivating. So tell me about the students. What's special about the students? The students that come to Madeline Island have, have all figured out that there's something about chamber music and about string quartets that, that they love and that they want more information about. Um, it's not a, this isn't a festival that um, tries to spread itself too thin, so it's very focused, uh, concentrated learning, and the, the work of, of these great composers that we study is at the, is at the heart of what we do. Um, the students um, are all academically accomplished and, and personally um, seem to be very settled in the sense that they, they want an artistic um, uh, experience that's unique. Uh, the collegiate students, most of them are in a performance track. They're headed for um, careers as professional performing musicians. Um, the high school students are, are thinking about that um, and, and wanting to be pushed and, and to sort of test their limits. Um, a lot of them may end up majoring in music, some of them may not. They may end up um, in other career paths, but the, the beauty of, of chamber music and string quartets in particular is that the, the benefits that we get are universal to, our, um, to other professions in terms of communication skills, problem solving, um, shared leadership, um, conflict resolution, meeting deadlines, all of these different things that we have to do as musicians, you have to do as a physician or a, you know, a, a, in, in corporate world. Um, so so the, the lessons are universal, the music is the, is the focus, and so the students are really open to that. They seem to come from all over the place. They, the students do come from all over the place. I think, I think we're living now, especially in a time when there are no boundaries. Um, they communicate with each other through social media um, and share their experiences and that, that spreads to their, their friends who are, are from all over the country and, and from around the world. So this is, this is a magical place and it's small. Um, there are only 56 students here each summer. Um, I think that's right. And uh, so the students get to know the faculty and, um, and vice versa, and there's a lot of personal investment that takes place. Tell me more about the, the faculty. What, there, there must be an exceptional group of people that come up here, but could you tell uh, me uh, more about that? Yeah, the, the, faculty, the faculty, generally um, speaking, is comprised of a, of a professional string quartet every week. Um, that's then supplemented by a, an additional string quartet worth of, um, worth of faculty from, from various institutions around the country. Anybody who teaches in the summer is a committed educator um, and committed to the, the future of music. Um, it's, not, it's not typical, actually, um, to have fa faculty that's as dedicated as, and as invested as they are here at Madeline Island. Um, we've, we've taught in a lot of places and it's possible for the, the experience to be kind of diluted and, and um, not directed. Um, at Madeline Island, I think that's the thing that's unique is that the, the faculty wants the very best for the students and they bring some of their own students um, and then, <coughs> excuse me, there's some, there's some teaching that, that goes on outside of, of, you know, the students that they normally work with. So during the year. So it's, it's an unusual group of faculty and, they, and everybody gets along. That's one of the other things that's, that's fantastic about this place. If you have students from all over the country, even all over the world, I've had a Chinese student, this, um, this camp must have some kind of 
reputation? Yeah, I think I think people know uh, know of the reputation of Madeline Island Music Camp. Um, uh, it certainly attracts an artist faculty of, of an international standing. So um, if they haven't heard of the camp, they've heard of the, of the people who are teaching here, and then they then they become um, you know acquainted with the camp. So there are definitely um, the networking around the world um, is is an important part of of bringing students here to give them the opportunity to work in this environment. Tell me something about the uh, sociology or psychology of a quartet. <laughs> I think that I think the psychology of a of a string quartet um, working in that environment is essential to the to the, the personal and professional success for for any string player. Um, it's unlike any other working environment um, in the sense that um, your role as your role is constantly shifting uh, and and since there's no director or conductor, um, it's incumbent upon the members of the quartet to have a shared investment. Um, we joke in our quartet that everyone has to have 33% investment in a, in a quartet, so you've got a little left over. Um, you're really responsible for the well-being of your colleagues. Rather than um, taking care of yourself musically, you have to, you have to um, look out for what's best in, for the music and, and help, your, empower, help to empower your, your colleagues. And to do that, you have to be at your best and your most flexible um, and your more, most creative. And um, so, so the, the challenge is there's never a letdown. And if you consider that with the string quartet repertoire, you're, you're playing music by the most brilliant, some of the most brilliant minds in the history of sort of Western art. And and then they're at their best. So if you these composers, so if you if you bring an 86 percent effort to a Beethoven quartet, you're really paddling upstream. It's it makes it very difficult. So it's a way for you to become uh, aware of the of the working process and skills of these great composers, and then have that feed your own your own growth. But the ability to communicate and the ability to um, help one another is essential and so it's it, and it's a it's a complex thing because it's a, a string quartet is based is a relationship based on constructive criticism so the input you get is always I like what you're doing but there's always a there's always a that's always part of the process so um, uh, it's it's challenging and but essential to to students empowering their own learning so that they can they can teach themselves in the end does playing in a quartet require, I mean, you're all really great musicians in your own right. Is there some kind of sublimation of the ego? Well, we, we joke that the, 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 in, in, our, in our quartet especially that the biggest problem, one of the biggest challenges we have as musicians is ego. And it, and it works both ways. Sometimes it's that our ego is, is too big um, and we're, we're, we're sort of self-oriented. The other, other times it's the problem is that our ego, um, we're trying our best. We're always trying to do our best and sometimes trying harder actually impedes the the artistic you know I'm, I, I as I've said to you, I, I love music I don't know anything about the mechanics or structure of it but you there's a lot of talk about the structure of music right, when you're talking about this the structure of music are you talking just about the notes or the composers instructions or on tempo what is that well, well part of what we what we what we teach here in in, in the during the course of the the summer is um, of course, we're, everybody's trying to play their instrument better and raise their, their technical fluency and um, increase the number of options they have artistically, but as you interact with the music of these composers, understanding the structure um, and, the, and the compositional techniques they use, um, in that, those, that knowledge helps to inform the decisions you make at the instrument. So understanding, for instance, the structure of how the, how the, the melodic themes are organized and contrasted against one another um, tells you, informs you, gives you some ideas about how you can vary and um, exaggerate those differences for the listener. In, in the end, musical form is not much different than uh, the form that's used in cinema. Um, it's not much different than the importance of the form in, in the visual arts and painting where you have to have you have to have a pers you have to have perspective and scale, and you have to have relief. You have to have a focal point, and you have to have contrast. Um, a listener is sort of um, unwittingly led along, almost as if being told a story, looking for these these elements. They they're trying to organize contrast and and um, variety um, uh, as they're listening. As storytellers, um, players have to to be cognizant of how they're doing that. So you have to you have to pace the information that you're giving. 
playing as well as you can all the time, all that really ensures is that you're going to flatten the information out. So your inflection as a player has to shift like it would as a storyteller. Um, when the drama tightens, uh, you tighten your sound. When the harmonies tighten, you want to make the, the sound more tense. And when there's resolution or stability, you want to relax that. And so um, that's part of our pro teaching process with the students that as well as they play, um, the journey toward having more variety in their playing is really, that's the artistic side of, of, of working as a musician. So, um, how do you, I guess, divine the intent of a composer emotionally and structurally when, like with Mahler's Fifth Symphony, the third movement, um, some people say the intent was it to be about eight minutes long, mm -hmm. and now it's played 13 minutes. Mm -hmm. Very lugubrious. Yeah. How, how do you? How do you? How clear are, are composers in terms of their intent? Well, I, I think the intention of the composer, they, tr they're, they're to a certain degree, they're entrusting the well-being of their music to the players. Um, they want, they love uh, the living composers we've worked with. Love the discovery process of their own work. They love their works reinterpreted, um, as long as it's done with a great deal of integrity. Um, as long as your intentions are to maximize the emotional effect uh, uh, of the music, uh, I, uh, composers, comp composers are open to that. Um, I, I think that it's a little bit, being a musician, being a classical musician is a little like being an archaeologist. You're piecing together pieces of information as best you can based on the tidbits that are left there, the dots on the page. We know certain things um, based on performance tradition, what's been done in the past that's been sort of handed down through our, our teachers, through the generations. but. Um, what you're really looking for is you're looking, you're asking questions all the time, like a like a like an archaeologist would, like if if a piece is in a certain meter, why is it in that meter or in a certain key? What did the compo Why is it in that key? Rather than taking those things for granted, um, why are why are certain instruments playing certain themes, and why is the orchestration the way it is? Um, the answers keep changing as you as you as you have relationships with these pieces. Um, I've been in my quartet for for a little over 20 years and um, we've played a lot of this you know the quartets of Beethoven several times and um, every time we come back to one of these pieces it's grown to me it's changed um, I have a new perspective and I hear new things um, in the music and and I can only imagine what Beethoven must have heard because he, he it came from him so uh, uh, it's 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 a profound growing experience I think that's one of the most nourishing parts of being a musician is you you never stop asking questions um, and so your your process is never it's never complete and the more you know the more you're responsible for so that's another thing we try to impart to the students that um, the, the concept that they're going to eventually have all the answers that that doesn't really exist why is uh, music important in this dog-eat-dog -dog world we live in? You know, music, music still has, it, it, it's, it's, it's going to always be pertinent to the human condition because, because it allows, it's another plane of, of, of existence, really, of problem solving and spatial reasoning. Um, it's another reference point, just like a walk in the woods is a reference point f for somebody, or reading a book, or reading a poem, or eating a great meal. Um, that that experience of 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 experiencing emotion and drama in sort of a time space um, uh, environment is unique, and um, especially live music, uh, recorded music has sort of become more of a mainstay in, in popular music, but live music is essential to the human condition. And um, until people um, fully embrace that, they're going to always be asking those questions about why it's still why it's still pertinent, but um, uh, it, I think the fact that this music has been around for as long as it has is a testament to the strength of the music. Um, it's not that there's a, a committee just advocating for certain pieces of classical music. It's it's almost as if as if the art um, is is stronger than than time, and it's going to it's going to last. So we feel very fortunate to be living our lives inside of that environment. Plain versus listening, you were talking about that last night. When you actually are sitting in an audience listening to some performers, are you able to let go of the mechanics and just get Absolute, away? Absolutely. We, you know, as players, when you, when, you, when you shift from the stage into the audience and you're listening, 
um, you're listening for the same thing that everyone in the audience is listening for. You're listening for contrast and drama. Um, and uh, you know, you're aware of, of certain technical decisions people are, are making, but, but the music is so um, engrossing that it's difficult to listen to anything by, by Mendelssohn or Schubert or Beethoven or Mozart and not hear, hear their voice in the music. And so um, we encourage our students to try when they're in the audience to listen in terms of form, to listen for first themes and second themes and, and contrast uh, and for the importance of it. But generally speaking, what makes a great performance is, is our ability to give ourselves over to the moment as a listener and for the performer to create opportunities for the imagination of the listener to run wild. And that's, that's what we're trying to build here is, is that special experience that the students can have up here in, in, in this on this beautiful island. What do you hope a student uh, leaves this uh, camp with? Uh, you know, our goal always is to empower students to have new tools for decision making, new options, um, to not feel pressure to, to try harder, but um, to try what they're doing differently. Um, uh, you know, the uh, tools, having, having more tools as an artist includes having um, understanding how to ask more questions um, and what to do with those answers, what question follows those, the answers that the music gives you, and, and having more tools. So ideally, when a student leaves Madeline Island, when they go back to practice, they're going to see the music differently in the practice room, they're going to have different tools for problem solving, and they're going to get to a solution much sooner than they did when they came here. Um, ideally, we would love it if, if what normally took three weeks for a student to achieve, they could do in three days. Um, and that doesn't mean practicing three weeks worth, worth of, of hours, but, but making, making three weeks worth of decisions before they get their instrument out. And, and so they know what they're actually trying to achieve rather than assessing in, in, in sort of ref, upon reflection what they didn't like. So, so the process is much more proactive. Um, and it's possible. It really is possible because we've seen it work. And, and the students here are just now getting, in the, here in the first week of Madeline Island, just getting a taste of this. Um, it's going to be exciting to see what happens over the next next few weeks. Here's my last question, and then uh, I'll ask you if there's any questions you think I should have asked. But uh, so these kids come from all over. <clears throat> they get here on Sunday, and they're thrown together in a dorm. They don't know each other. How does that work? Yeah, the learning curve, uh, the learning curve is is very fast here because the the students arrive on a Sunday and they have to play their first concert uh, six days later. Um, and that means that not only do they find out what they're going to play, but they meet their, their colleagues and they're thrown into sort of the, the, the trenches to get to work. Um, uh, some students, some students are, are more um, adept at this. Some students are challenged immediately, but the, usually after about 72 hours, the music takes the, the, the center, uh, is, becomes the, the focal point of their work, and they give themselves over. And it's amazing to hear in the, in the practice, room, um, practice rooms how the process is unfolding. It really goes from a puzzle on the floor that, you, that you're not sure how it's going to work to you start to hear it coming together hour by hour. And um, uh, it, it's, it's an amazing experience. So is there any question I didn't ask that I should have? I, th I think you're good. Oh, good. I think it's great. Those well, were great questions. I'm happy to hear that from you because, like I say, I'm a layman. No, those were great questions. Well, thank you.